Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. Welcome back. Best hour of their day, fans. It's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday today, Katie? Yep. The day this is releasing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, today's well, definitely not Wednesday, but the day. Play along, really play along, Wednesday. team. It's Wednesday. Play along. I'm trying to pretend, I'm trying to add some value to the podcast. Pretend like it's we're not. Live. Hey, it's not it's actually Wednesday. relevant. I don't know why people care about that. Nobody gives a shit what day it is. I have a weird thing that I like to watch things that are more current. Uh, well, it's current the day that it comes out, not when you recorded yeah. it. That's it's always out. Late. Unless it's, it's coming live, out, this- it's not technically current. We are live here at best hour of their day. So the other day, well, Fern, I want to ask you a question. I can't wait. You are branding all of your new bikes. Correct. How many did you buy? Concept two bikes. No uh, tricycles. How many tricycles well, do you have? I have. Right. Well, I have. I have Echo bikes and assault bikes. So, uh, you know, details matter. You you have three types of bikes now. Uh, I do. Getting ready to have two. What are you going to get rid of the assault bikes? Yep. And then replace know, those with Echo perfect. bikes. Correct. Cool. How many? So I think. How many I, think I think everybody should do that. I don't know if we talked about that before, but like your cardio equipment, certain ones you could swap out every three to five years and pay twenty, maybe thirty percent on the high end for a full fleet of new cardio equipment. When you say twenty, thirty percent, you mean after the sale? Yeah, you sell everything. You get all that money because all of those uh, have very high um, resale. resale value. Yeah, yeah, so like you, I mean, rowers are crazy. Like you could sell, you could sell a PM4. Uh, it's probably two or three years old for eight hundred plus dollars, depending on what kind of shape it's in. Like they are crazy high resale value. Um, even the assault bikes, as long as it's not a complete piece of shit, if you got an updated monitor on there and you've and you've kept it in somewhat good condition with maintenance, you can sell those for four hundred and fifty bucks all day long. So, uh, you know, if you yeah, buy some of the new, things actually appreciated during uh, the pandemic. Well, that's not real life, but this is this is like yeah. normal world. Normal right. world, you can sell all of those things, uh, and you will sell them quickly. Like it won't be a long. Uh, I've, when it, this was like maybe three years ago. This is definitely before the pandemic. But I uh, we sold all of our rowers, and I think it took a month to sell to sell fifteen. And I think the lowest I took was maybe six hundred and fifty bucks. Who do you typically sell them to? Anybody that wants to buy it. But who winds up buying mostly? Is it members? Is it? It's a complete crapshoot. Well, how do they? How do people find out about them? Where are you advertising? I always go to the gym first, so I give them a couple days heads up to let them claim whatever they want to claim, and then from there I'll go to. There's like we have a local, like CrossFit Hampton Roads page, which is like six thousand something members on it, I think. So I'll drop it in there, and yeah, I mean they'll they'll be scooped up in. You know, like I'll get rid of all these bikes. I'll go to the members first. I'll get rid of. I have eight assault bikes I'll be getting rid of. I'll get rid of four of those first week probably to members and I'll get rid of the other four the following week with the Hampton Roads page. Nice. So what made you decide to get rid of the assault bikes and replace them with Echo bikes? <laughs> Maintenance, long-term durability. The assault bikes are just tanks. I know people are like, they're harder to do. And I'm like, well, work harder. I don't know what to tell you. Like they're The they, Echo bike is harder. I don't think so. I think everybody. I think it just feels different, so they equate it with harder. Well, um, it's it definitely doesn't trickle like the assault bike. Well, it turns off. That's why. Like it has like a it has like a it has a very short inactive period where it shuts off. Um, yeah, but I like bike. to get those. I like to ride out those free calories. Yeah, listen. We all know you're a cheater. It's fine. But the point <laughs> is that um, it, it it feels the same. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if everybody's on the same bike. Who gives it? It's completely. Well, it doesn't matter if you have different bikes, technically, right? Yeah, it's your workout. Hey, unless it's a competition, then everybody needs to have the same equipment. Sure. Say we're doing a workout, five rounds, call it twenty calories. 
either bike for right, five rounds, 20 calories, 20 wall ball shots. It doesn't matter what the other movement is. What's the deal? If I trickle, do I go to 40 the next round or do you have your members reset and do 20 even every round? Uh, well, some of it would be determined by the bike, but in many instances, you should just reset it. Well, that's yeah. That's my let's let's assume I, echo bikes, right? Pretty simple to reset, right? I think it's just a hold of one of the buttons, right? Isn't it? Oh, well, maybe a start stop. I mean, how about Concept this? Like, two bikes and rowers, do super simple. Don't do either. Don't just do go either. twenty from where you're at. Do some math. I got to do some math on this workout. I mean, no. You don't. You could just add. You could just go to twenty from where you're at. Yeah, that's math. Not, no, so, not really. It's just sometimes that's hard though. Like, you ever do like a workout? It'll be like math 20, is adding. 18. Math is adding things. This is just <laughs> counting. Like it just goes up one, two, three, four, five. But you, but you if you do a workout like twenty one, eighteen, fifteen, and you're doing that, I've done that, and you're like, shit, what's eighteen on top of twenty three? Because it trickled a couple extra calories. Half the time I'm on the bike. It's occupied doing the math to figure it out. But you, you would encourage all of this. All of this. Reset. All of this is a discussion about laziness. Just I'm reset lazy. the fucking bike. I listen. Okay. I know better than anybody how lazy when, you are. The fact you still have yet to get in the sauna like just proves my point. I'm gonna do it this weekend. See, this weekend it's happening. Uh, well, Madison is a this, complete disaster, this weekend, right? huh? Yeah, this weekend. Yeah, yeah we, had, I bet. we had COVID uh, in the, around the house. People were testing positive. We got all sorts listen, of craziness happening. As a guy who's single parenting with two businesses, whose child has been expelled well, from school for not wearing a mask, I don't care. Yeah, well, I don't care what you're. We doing. haven't talked. I mean, do you want to talk about that on the podcast? I thought that was I private, so I wasn't bringing it I, up. I don't care. I mean, it's let's not bring it up not. yet. There's there's lawsuits and stuff, so let's make sure we don't get anybody in trouble. Specifically. I mean, one they already changed. They already Hernandez. changed the policy. Yeah. <laughs> Did they really? Gonna, yeah. Yeah. That's Wait. Why so I, is she going back to school? We'll probably put her back in on Monday. But um, the same school. Well, I can't get her anywhere anywhere else that fast. If you get, but your it just kid goes. Back it just goes back. School, it just goes back in. Impressive. It just goes back into my my whole point, which is like, why did we do this? Okay. Let's why not, do we do this? Let's not get political, Katie. We're not. Katie really it's not did. political. We're Listen, gonna get canceled. Jay, can we talk about can we talk about how scared you are of expressing your opinion? <laughs> I'm not scared, and I appreciate you're your definitely, opinion. At least you're definitely scared. Like it freaks about you what? out. It freaks you out to talk about those things. No, I don't care. We can talk about it. I just I, I know a most people don't want to hear about it. They're that's not it. true either. <laughs> Well, that's at least either. that's how I. That's feel. what everybody that's thinks. That's what everybody thinks. Everybody B, wants to a, talk about it because it's such insanity, and that's the problem: is that everybody's scared to talk about it because they're like, "I'm going to get in trouble," and I'm like, "Get in trouble for saying reasonable things." That sounds like clown town. So, uh, I, we haven't talked too much this week. My parents were in town; they left yesterday, and so I was talking to my dad about it. And you know, I get most of my knowledge on the pandemic from you and Joe Rogan. So. You know, those are my two major outlets and I'm talking to my dad about it and he's a, you know, a 30 year doctor, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So he's very, the science guy. He's, he's so a, like, he was a dentist, right? He was a dentist. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, a doctor? obviously it's a doctor, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Um, it's a DDS is what it stands for <laughs> or what it, you know, the, he used to have that on his license plate. So, but my point is like, he's very much like, nope, it's changing because it's science and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and I'm like, and I said to him, like, it's funny because, like, you believe this. And, you know, I've mentioned you. And I'm like, Fern truly believes X. Like, so it's like we all have our different beliefs. Uh, I don't know that I believe anything. I just question a lot of things. Right? Yeah. You, you, you there's do a lot of things a lot. that there's a lot of things that that have very valid questions. You know, like they're, you know, again, however you feel about it we have to acknowledge some truths, which is there's in the past three weeks, there has been a complete 180 on many things with regard to this whole scenario, it, w which are many of the things that people were questioning two years ago. So that's why people are angry. You know, if you look at what's going on in Canada, I mean, they shut off 25% of the supply line between US and Canada, 25%. 
Of what? I'm not aware of this. Tell me. This, Give me the news. Do you know this, Katie? Don't pretend like you know. Remember. Katie said there like she knows. She the, the, know the, 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 was it the Freedom Convoy? The truckers? So they're not allowed. Is it stopping things from coming in to the U.S. or out of the U.S.? They've just blocked everything. Like, just like it was like a 50 mile long trucker convoy. Just oh, I did. All their trucks. I saw, was that where like truckers were bringing bottles of gas? Like the that bottles isn't the right word. There's a lot of weird stuff going on there, but the whole anyway, point is, I, the, 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 this is a little. I have no idea what's happening in the world. No, no, well, yeah, nobody's shocked. If it's that. not happening, literally in this room, in my basement room here, we get it. I don't you're know. The, about you're it. the you're the least informed person I interact with, which is alarming. Because am I, I really a lot? You're very not up to speed on most things, <laughs> except for CrossFit. Even that, that is questionable. <laughs> Even that is questionable. What, what what am I behind on? Do I not know about? I mean everything just, basically. Yeah, oh, right. I, I, I'm, right. not, I I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to announce this. Okay. Just yet, but I will tell you that by the end of this year, you will not be able to make that claim anymore. Wait, what? You just blew yeah. my mind. I'm yeah. not going to be able to make the claim of. The, the 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 this this level four interaction that we have is going oh, to change oh. drastically. It's going to change. Drastically. Oh, are you getting your level oh, four? Oh, really? I'm not for... saying anything. I'm just saying Isn't... it's going. I'm just saying not only, a, not, uh, only, not only not only not only is that something that might be potentially on the horizon. Um, I mean, there could be a thing where like crossover life life is a level four facility, and then, you know, too bad for you. And and when I say that, when I, I will I will put the stipulation on that my certificate will say real level four. Can you hear this? Can you guys hear that? Is that news? Turn it on. It's the news. Breaking news. news. This is the breaking news sound <laughs> that we now have on, um, <laughs> on the pod. Can you hear it? There we go. Breaking news. Fern, what are we saying? El Rife is gonna. No, oh, I'm just is... saying that I I think. Are you gonna, I... are you the new CEO? Are you the new CrossFit CEO? I'm Do we not know? I mean, here's what I will say. Out of a list of a thousand people, I'm probably not on that list for CEO candidates. A um, thousand? You might crack that. You might crack top eh, thousand. I don't know. I don't know. If hey, I Katie, even, I didn't even get a request to submit a resume, so I don't think I'm on the list. Katie, yeah. Okay, let's play Sophie's Choice. Okay, uh -huh. you know that movie? You know that reference, Katie? I do. Okay, say Eric Rosa had to name his successor. And he was limited to Fern and myself. This Who is not even take? a question. This is a no-brainer. I don't know. Eric and I go back. We were in the elevator a couple of times in Madison. Uh, we had that conversation at Sanitas. That doesn't. Um, none of these things help your cause. You think he's picking you? I don't think I know. He's like, uh, clearly one of these people is highly intelligent, significantly off, better looking, and. <laughs> Still and still operates a functional CrossFit affiliate. Then and he would that have is to... not Jason Ackerman. At first glance, I'll give you that. First glance, Fern seems like the better candidate. Tenth glance, you could just you he, stare he, at it; it only becomes more glance, obvious. Your life. Wait, sure, this isn't then, this isn't even an option. This is like then you do a little a, back to option. A. <laughs> then you do a little CrossFit Jason Ackerman Google search, and you see all the credentials that come after that. He sees the level four, the level three, every specialty seminar, uh, regional director, uh, you know, other other great accomplishments I can't even think of. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He, and he would have to go with crushing it, crushing it. So actually, this is oh. what pops up when you Google Jason Ackerman. So you're not even the first. That first one. <laughs> Who's that? That's 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 guy you you uh, google, google well first of all that dude always pops up i feel like there's a i think he's the fresh direct dude crunch based person profile do you have a crunch based person profile maybe maybe is that yeah. like myspace uh apparently oh, no, there is. Co founder and, co -founder and of fresh, fresh direct. direct that dude fucking monopolized grocery, Jason store. grocery store what a turd looking dude too um yeah. and then there's That's a weird. tattoo artist same thing about you hey, look katie you. slap crossfit on there Oh, new cannabis ventures. Maybe that was me. Okay, here we go. The Jason Ackerman.com. Instagram, of course. Games profile. That's I have website. a lot of questions about people that have 
a website. Yep, there we go. Look at that. Look, you're on it. You're on yeah. it, dude. Are you a cartoon? Are you in a band? What was that? <laughs> Ackerman this Mindset was, founder. This was before. This was before we got you know so big and wildly this successful. I, this, this is before you attach yourself to me in order to get somewhere in life. <laughs> Katie, um, go back. Go back, please. Go back to the Google search. To, oh, okay. Um, let's see. Scroll down. Games athlete videos. Oh Jason Games Ackerman. athlete. Hold on. Every there's like two hundred thousand, maybe four hundred thousand people that can say that. Yeah. Simply pulling up your games profile does not mean you are a games athlete. <laughs> look at me. Look at that. Five four. Wait, the weight's a little. The weight's already <laughs> already a liar. So he pulls up his profile Best and he goes like, "This dude's full of shit." <laughs> Five four, not accurate. One hundred forty five pounds, definitely not accurate. I saw him. I was recently saw him. He's like looking a little heavy. Looking a little heavy. I, little heavy. Little heavy. Um, I did. I did. So. I started cleaning up the diet yesterday. Parents left. We went to that restaurant that we all ate at. I overdid it as always. And then <laughs> yesterday, I got. Was I mean, I really, back. I really do want to bring this to your attention. You have a lot of excuses lately about why you can't do things. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I think this. I don't know. I have no. I have no excuse for my excuses. You shouldn't. <laughs> All right. I, well, here's what I think you should do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna mail you my copy of Extreme Ownership. I'm gonna write you a note in the front got it. Uh -huh. page. I, well, you clearly need to read it again. Um, and uh, and then we'll see if we can get you back on track. Oh, I like the way your brain's at, Katie. We need Google Jason Fernandez. I'm C. Singer I'm CEO songwriter. Of, 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 <laughs> Little known Sing skill that you guys right, didn't know right. I had, and CEO of Quake Capital. Yep, that's you, J Fern Three. You are the you, you are. do you do you come up faster up. than I do, of course. On a search of your own name, oh. yeah. IMDb is that you? Were you in some yeah. movies? Check that out, bro. Jason, look up the Jason Fernandez wife one. I saw that one <laughs> pop up. Virginia Beach, yeah. There we go. There we go. An actual, All right. an actual competitive athlete. Um, one hundred ninety-one pounds. So yeah, we sticking with that. I probably am close to that. I'm definitely not off by 15 to 20 Oh, Your CrossFit so ID is super low. My what? Your CrossFit ID. Oh, yeah. Why is yours so much lower than mine? Because I was in the game before you, bro. No, you weren't. Well, it depends when this, they... This, maybe, maybe. this says otherwise. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, all right, Katie. We're off yeah. topic. Bring us back into the Q&A. Shocker. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we have some questions about coach, some coaching topic questions for today. Um, so to kick it off, what is your, some advice on coaching new members with bad habits from previous Ooh. affiliates? They didn't give examples, did they? It doesn't look like, let me see. No, no examples. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we could just make some up. Um, mm -hmm. we could we could start. I, with think, like, I don't even think these examples matter all that much, right? It's kind of the same. It's all the same. Whether it's, I guess, you would lump them into a handful of categories. Is it simply moving, like bad habits, like this guy lets uh, his knees go in on the squat, or bad habits, like he cleans up his equipment early and isn't a team player? Yeah. Either the, way, either way, I answer. think. Yeah. Exactly. And this is kind of what we were talking about on the Patreon episode the other day because it came up and my answer would be the same, which is you get what you emphasize. So let's call it a rep shaver. If you don't emphasize the top spot and you emphasize hitting the stimulus, working hard, making good scaling options or, or, or choosing good scaling options, people won't shave reps It could because you have to think about it's not about them shaving reps. It's like, why are they shaving reps? So you have to go again, root cause, kind of like what we were talking about before. Like you're asking the wrong question. Like why, like why, you know, they need to stop shaving reps. I'm like, you, like, this is a weird, um, it doesn't, it, the, it, the, the logic there doesn't make sense. You're, you're trying to change something that you can't change. It's all based on reward system. This is, a, um, I was listening to somebody else and it's the same, it, it'd be the same with regard to, listen, I forget who I was talking. It might've been Joe Rogan or somebody else, but they were talking about, um, Bear with me on the political uh, we comparison always here. 
no, no, but, but comparison and they were talking about oh it was uh josh dubin i think he's a uh, he's part of the innocence project but he does like the uh oh i listened to that episode yeah well i listened to like very recent yeah YouTube, i think it's yeah. his like third time on but he was talking about um you know how though how they write legislature and uh and different stuff like that and it was it's all it's it's broken because the because of the incentive structure which is the same thing if you have something it's not left right they, they're all driving towards the same incentive you just happen to agree with one side more than the other right so it's like hard to blame somebody when it's all built on the same problem so you have to change the incentive structure so when people are shaving reps it's because they want to be recognized as the top spot and if they're if they want to be recognized as the top spot it's probably because they see somebody who's getting a lot of recognition and they would like to also get that recognition and we're not saying don't recognize people that do well um but if that's all, and you see this with a lot of gyms that where, where there's competitive athletes, you know, whether it's regional or games level or whatever you want to call it, um, you will find people doing that because they would like to be associated with this other person's success, which is not weird, by the way. Just isn't so that, we're on the same I mean, page. isn't that what any cheating is? Like you're basically most people are cheating not for some sort of internal reward, but <clears throat> for the recognition it provides externally. Right, exactly. So it, it just understanding, understanding that they that you might un unknowingly be, be creating an incentive structure that is feeding into this. It, it might that might be the problem, you know, like people do people ask all the time, do you guys have problems with that? I'm like, No, because it's not something that we incentivize, you know, from the from the outset, meaning, it's not something that we promote incentivize or encourage, starting with the wad brief, and then finishing with the cool down with regard to what we highlight in that time frame um if all we did was talk about the rx weights and all we did was talk about who was a top spot on the score it would be highly likely that you would have a lot of people chasing that and doing things in order to get there whether it was right or wrong um so it's, i think it's just something to consider like what what you what are you emphasizing and if you're emphasizing that you probably have people that are shaving reps have you have you ever had a rep shaver at rife Hundred percent. I'm not aware of a gym that hasn't. What? Um, well, how'd you handle it? I don't. You didn't do anything. There's one scenario in which I would intervene, and because outside of that, I don't care, right? I don't. It doesn't matter. Every and he, because here's why. Everybody. I, I mean, I agree with you for the record. I'm just. Everybody you still have to handle it as a box owner. No, not necessarily. You know, I don't have to do anything. Well, it depends, like you would depends say, on why. not doing anything is still doing something. Uh, yeah, not uh, no decision is still a decision, but that doesn't mean it's the wrong decision because it depends on what that looks like. If somebody is just doing that, first of all, everybody knows. Any If you're a rep shaver at a gym, please do not fool yourself into thinking that nobody notices. 100%. Like, everybody knows, right? So, okay, got it, which makes – which makes that score invalid. They look at the score and they're like, that's not actually what happened, whatever. And then they move on with their day. So it's, you've been discredited whether people say it to your face or not. Um, the other thing, the only way I'll intervene is if that person is rep shaving and then being bombastic about it. And they're like, ha ha, crushed you. And I've had to do that once or twice where um, I'm like, hey, listen, I actually, like if you have an integrity problem or you have some sort of weird you know, issue with, you know, needing praise, then that's fine. But don't talk shit. Just be quiet. It's fine. You do it. Do you do you? I'm fine with that. I, I don't know what else you got going on in your life. I'm not going to make any assumptions. Um, and if you want to do that, that's fine. You're cheating yourself. But what you cannot do is throw your weight around with false scores. You cannot do that. That is not acceptable in my mind because now because now what you're actually doing is now you're taking that and you're projecting it onto other people. That is not acceptable. Um, that's the only time I would intervene. And I really haven't had to do that because it doesn't happen that often. And there are, and there are people and I'm like, why does that concern you? Right. We all know what happens when the open comes around. Right. We yeah. all know how I mean, to do Yeah. Right. They either don't register or they magically don't do well. Um, I had a so guy yeah. every year, like three straight years at Albany was clearly and you know, I don't want to use this guy's name, but I can tell you physically, you would not have suspected him of being a cheater or a rep shaver. Like 
He was a jacked, jacked human being. We had a guy that was exact same way, but he got so brazen with it that so anybody who's been I think we might have talked about this before. Anybody who's done this long enough, I have a general clock running in my head all the time with regard to how long something takes. And if you depart the pull up bar or drop the bar 15 to 20 seconds prior to how long that should take, I don't actually need to count. I know you didn't do them all, right? If it's 15 toes to bar and you get off in seven seconds, I'm like, uh, bro, like just basic math tells me that you didn't do all of this. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like, I think experienced coaches, you don't even like, I don't need to count. I just know like yeah. that wasn't possible. You, I, you've seen so many reps and you've done so many workouts that like, it just jumps out to you. They're like, man, like that was really fast and I've seen really fast and you're not moving that fast. So now there's a disconnect here. And then maybe I count another round or something like that. And they're like, do you go over there and count the reps? And I'm like, I don't go over there and count the reps and say one, two, three, four, but you can indirectly count the reps by going over there, giving them some movement tips and then give them the old like, Hey, last five reps, here we go. And then yeah. you can watch their facial expression change because they are aware that you know how many reps they've got left. But I'm not saying do all the reps. So you can be a little sneaky about it. Um, and I don't have to be like, you're not doing all the reps. I can just encourage you um, with proper math uh, and then get you where you need to go. Yeah. And, and the you know, we talked about it recently on our coaches development group, but rep shavers are still getting fitter. And who cares? Right? It, 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 and who it's, cares? We've talked about this before. It's like it has zero impact on your fitness. None. Like there's no winner. There's no prize money. There's nothing. It's just like, why do you care? Just do your workout. You know, and well, this is before we talk about there's assumption that they there are a subset of people that are doing that that just can't count. Or that purposely have, changed the reps didn't make it right. clear. Right. You don't know that if they're if they're scaling or not. Now, if you're looking at somebody like there's no reason for that person to be scaling, it would cause some um some but I have I have I think even recently. Oh yeah, I did it recently. I was we were on the bike or something like that. And I just had an I had a number in my head. I was just like, this is the number. Like, whatever. And I like got off the bike. And even I knew it. I was like, why I'm like, why is everybody still on the bike? I, like went over, grabbed the barbell, and then I was going, then I was like, hey, is it 20 calories he's like it's 30 and i was like ha! i'll go back over the bike and finish those last 10 i was like i just had 20 in my brain and i was set um and afterwards people were like you freaked me out when you got off the bike so quickly and i was yeah. like, i freaked myself out because i know my level of fitness is not adequate for that um but but, but let's go back to the question because we're assuming it was that but whatever the bad habit is i think immediately most people in life will take a bad habit or you know, some sort of behavior that they don't like or agree with and take it very personally and assume the worst in that person. And I think this is one of those scenarios where it's like, don't attribute to malice what can be attributed to ignorance. Yeah. Right. Like you're coming from a different affiliate, no different than, hey, if you're at my house and I put my feet up on the couch and then show up at your house and do the same, it's not like I'm being disrespectful. It's like, that's what's allowed here. That's mm -hmm. what I do or your kids, yeah. whatever. But the same is true with the, the box. Like, mm. hey, the box they were at for the previous five years, the only box they've attended might not have ever said anything about, <coughs> let's not you know, clean the, up your equipment. Before so the other one would, it. yeah, that one would be a great one. And that's just a simple reminder. Again, they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what your culture is. My job is to incentivize the right things and create a culture that people assimilate to such to the point where like, if they don't want to assimilate, it's very, it's very uh, uncomfortable for them. Not, not that I'm trying to make it uncomfortable, but they will self-select in or out at that point. They're like, I don't like this. This is a kind of an accountability thing, an integrity thing that like makes me uneasy. And okay, man, I'm not going to hold it against you, but like that's the way we roll here. Um, coaching would be another one. Like athletes that come from gyms who don't get a ton of coaching, and then they walk in your gym the first day, and you know they got the old tiny dancer squat, but they've been crossfitting for five years, and you're like, hey, dude, widen up your feet. And they're like, well, this is just the where I squat. And I'm like, not here, it isn't. Like that's, that's a, that's a terrible squat position. I don't care what you did at your previous gym. That is a, that is a garbage ass squat and we're going to fix it. So, um, and this is, and, and this is where you have to break some beliefs, right? So I posted an Instagram video yesterday, um, and, and was, uh, gaslighting you with my spelling. The, um, 
with regard to explaining to them because all, all they're, again, they're, they've been incentivized by this upward trend of performance instead of doing it right. And this is where you can get them to understand, like, listen, I want you to have an upward trend of performance, but unless we create true efficiency, the mechanics that you are currently losing have a very finite ceiling. You will not break through that with that technique or that position or that level of mobility. It is impossible. So we have to fix it, which means there might be a downtrend in your performance because we have to we have to get past that and create some efficiency, at which point you're going to have to work harder in order to create that. And then you'll come out of that. But that all goes back into you get what you emphasize. And if I emphasize attention to detail, if I emphasize proper mechanics, if I emphasize being coachable, if I emphasize lots of correction across the full spectrum of athletes, they will they will buy into it because they're not going to have a choice and, or they'll self-select out. Yeah, and really all you're suggesting is it's a conversation. And I think that's... We're Both most... indirect and direct, right? So it might be a direct conversation, or it might just be a "Here's how we do things." And you know, going back to the the conversation that we had with Nicole Christensen, you're not special. Like you may have been crossfitting for seven years, that doesn't make that squat appropriate, or safe. It just or, or safe or efficient right. or whatever, right? It's it's just a bad squat, and I'm. It's not a shot at you. You're not a bad person, but that's not good squat mechanics. Again, this goes back to the whole. You, you know, movement should be fairly binary within reason. Be like, I, it should be a proper squat mechanics based on the five points of performance or not. That's it. That's it. So, all right, Katie, give us another one. Okay. Um, your best piece of advice for coaching athletes who lack body awareness. My uh, best. Lots, lots of visual cues. Okay. I would go with have them move slower. Yeah. Lots of visual cues. And uh, some of this would have to do with, uh, you might be getting in some, I might be getting some nuance here, but this might, some of this might depend on age. So if they're older athletes, then it might be, uh, so the, the same principle applies to both youth and, and masters athletes. When I say masters, I mean like true masters. I don't mean like you're 35 and the masters for the open. Um, I'm talking about like 65 plus 70 years old where you might have to do the movement with them just like you would with kids and walk them through that. Because um, I, I actually don't know the kind of science or, or reason behind that, but I do know that that is something that is uh, pretty commonly accepted with both youth and um, kind of like your, your older athletes um, for the, for the visual type cueing. In, in most instances you would say, Hey, don't talk and, and, and demo while they do it because it's not appropriate or it's ineffective. Uh, there are exceptions to that. And it's typically with youth or older people. Uh, but a lot of visual cues because if they don't know where their body is in space you have to show them be like hey your your hands are here i want you here in this overhead position and they just have no idea so visual cues are, are key and um i don't think people use visual cues one enough and two proficiently yeah, and I think, you know, well, like you said, kids notoriously have no body awareness, but just getting them to move a little slower. And then I would also put out maybe some like, tactile feedback, you know, whether it's a ball behind them, stand them in front of a rig, things like that, just to make them avoid certain things to move their body in the right direction. You block their knees, you know, maybe that will help get their hips to move back. So that and just but lots of practice. Um, yeah. And, and this again, going back to where I started before, like you get what you emphasize. If you're, if you're doing your due diligence on doing an appropriate general warm up, if you're doing your due diligence on doing a lot of PVC pipe work, uh, and getting lots of reps in there so that they can stack thousands of reps, practice reps over the course of six months to a year, that's how you create better awareness. It's practice. But if you skip all the practice, you know, and this is this is one of the downsides that nobody talks about with regard to putting too many things in the hour. If you skip all of the practice, I mean, it's unreasonable to think that people are going to get better awareness. If I go right to intensity, that's not where the good stuff happens. The good stuff happens in the practice portion, and then we can ramp up the intensity. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because 
something that I think a lot of coaches and trainers and box owners overlook is they jam pack an hour of class time with workouts, forgetting like it's, it, you don't have to work out for an hour, move for an hour. And some of that movement should be like you're saying practice and skill development. And it, you know, it doesn't, I get that you think you need to be moving as in a workout, but you go to most any other types of strength and conditioning or sport or martial art, and there's technique work within that hour, right? So I know it's not that you have to do three workouts in a day. It's that you have to keep your athletes moving. And, and part of that should be skill development. Yeah. Uh, so I have a story. The, uh, so going back to the other one about like you get what you emphasize. So this, I think this might've been two days ago. <clears throat> I walked in the gym and Lindsay had this like ear to ear. Wait, you, like, you, you, you froze for one second. She had what, oh, a grin? I did you say a grin? Yeah, like she, a she had a shit eating grin. On, yeah, she had a shit eating grin on her face ear to ear. And I was like, she's coaching the class. I'm like, what did you do? She's like, nothing. I'll tell you in a little bit. So <clears throat> one of the other interns pulls me aside and he's like, yeah, he's like, there's a new guy over here. Fit guy, young guy, you know, uh, you know, lives his life in the, in the spec ops world. And, um, <laughs> and oh, yeah, I, met that, I met that dude. I remember that dude. Yeah. Uh, you did meet that dude, but that's not the guy I'm talking about. Um, oh. the the guy. How, the guy you just that got a new out. computer, by the way. How is your new computer so janky? Like it's you have the nicest computer. Out of it's all only of on us. eCam. It's only on eCam that this happens. I don't know why, but um, Katie, everything else is fine. The um, <clears throat> well, I actually, I actually operate a full, an actual affiliate with people in it all day who are on the internet. Jay, I don't know. I know you don't. I know you're only Ross Dude, can only. But my parents are here. Bandwidth. When my parents were here, the internet slowed down. I was like, you guys, you get one device. Which device so, do you want to put on our internet? Uh, yeah, the you're prioritizing your own device on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> the, um, so, uh, so she comes over and she just kind of does a drive by him. She's like, I told him. And, and I was like, okay. So afterwards, I walk out in the parking lot and there's vomit everywhere. Right. And I'm not condoning making people work out until they vomit. That's not what it's, I'm suggesting. It is fun. It is fun once in a while. Um, it's gross is what it is. But... <laughs> She was like, I told him that he shouldn't do that. And he was like, I want to do it. And she was like, okay, I'm going to let you um, smash your own hand in the door because that's what that needs to happen right now. And afterwards, he was like, I should have listened. And I'm like, cool. Like that. So that is, again, had she just not said something and just let him do his own thing and then not followed up with him afterwards, you have to think about what that series of interactions would yield it would yield somebody who just thinks that they know what they're doing when they don't you know and we've talked about Lindsay. like she's a great coach and she has no problem smashing people um but that one she was probably too happy about <laughs> um once in a while that's fun to do like hey make your bed now there's yeah there's definitely a time and a place for that and it is entirely athlete dependent like can this person a you know psychologically take the whooping and then physically are they going to be okay if this implodes? And the short answer for that one was both on yes. And Some yeah, it was kind of it was kind of fun to watch that happen. Um, you know, we had to bring the hose out into the parking lot and because there was like sled drags and rope climbs and box step ups and you know, the young lad bit off more than he could chew. And it, uh, happens. it was it was funny to watch. But that's what I'm talking about. You know, had had she not pushed the envelope on there <clears throat> and then been correct afterwards that's hard to correct. But now this guy knows the deal. He was like, you know, probably he's like, ah, this chick doesn't know what she's talking about. She's tiny and learned his lesson. And she wasn't, she wasn't mean about it, but prove the point. Let's do one more, Katie. <clears throat> okay. Um, tips for interviewing for a coaching position. Which way? As a box owner or as a coach? As a coach. So if you're a coach and you're about to interview for a new coaching position. Yeah, get your level four. <laughs> no problem. You don't have to interview ever again. What if you're only right. a level one? How do you like <laughs> Well, you got to jump right to level four? No. Get a, hey, I, I mean, at this point, the, the what Jay just suggested is like print out a piece of paper and just write <laughs> L4 on it because there's no, it's not real. In crayon. And be like, hey, look what I got, right? <laughs> um, you so, saw the picture. You saw the certificate, Katie. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. It still doesn't make it real. Um, what would the, I uh, say? I, well, Fern, I do think this is 
like slowly CrossFit's growing, becoming, you know, a recognized career path. There will be more of this happening. There will be people we have a lot more. We have multiple affiliates that we work with that are actively looking for full time coaches uh, to travel there. I can you know, think of work three there. or four right off the top of my head who are like struggling. Um, like Colton and, is looking for yeah. one. Colton uh, Ryan, uh, but John Wells, no, I think, is looking for one. And uh, and they're offering like a real career path. It's not as if it's like, hey, move here for fourteen dollars an hour. It's like fifty grand plus commission, like opportunity to run your own program. So I think we're going to see this more and more. Um, personally, obviously, yes, have your level one. I think it would be a no brainer to me to go get your level two. Other than the cost, like you should be taking your level two. It, it, it shows that you care a little more. It shows that you've coached a little bit. You've gotten feedback. Um, well, but- it's just the requirement to get to the, to a next, another level of legitimacy. Which is like if you if you're gonna climb the ladder to get your level three, the level two is how it's you mandatory. get there. Like, yeah, right. Like yeah. it's mandatory. Like I don't understand that. Like you're like if you want to be seen as a legitimate professional, whether you like it or not, um, there like people are gonna look at your credentials, and that will give you some credibility or not. It will give you pa- it will give you paper credibility. It doesn't. There's, but that there's paper credibility that is it, beyond. Is important. Yeah, it's beyond. It's just not paper. gonna tell it's me also- things. It shows me you care a little bit. It shows me you, you're taking this thing right. seriously. It'd be like, hey, how do I get a job at a hospital? Um, you, you know, I know you need to be a doctor, but I stopped at my undergrad. And it's like, cool, go back to school. Like, finish right. med school and come back. And not so that I that'd be same... the... Go ahead. I was saying, not that that's like, depending on the box, like, that might be the requirement. I'm just saying, if you showed up at a, a gym I owned with your level one, I'd be like, cool everybody and their uncle has a level one that doesn't mean it's good or bad it just means it's it's low-hanging fruit you come back with your level two i'm like okay you've put some time and you care about this a little bit more obviously as you go to your level three and beyond that you know people show up with their level three i think it's almost a no-brainer to get hired these days um um well so obviously i can give you an example it's good to get along with the community well, that yeah that's a but that's an abstract, right? There, there's no, you have to get to that point where you're in consideration. So the, the, a resume is still a thing and your resume can't say, I like CrossFit. Like that's not sufficient. So like, for an, for example, if you, if Cassidy like up and left and he's like, dude, I hate this place. You're the, you're the worst person ever. I'm out. I'm going to go work for, uh, James Fitzgerald or something like that. I'm going to go. Okay. The, <laughs> I believe in vitality now. Yeah. I believe in vitality, not health. Um, and, uh, and if I put that out for a GM, if you submit a resume and all you have is a level one, you, that's going right in the trash. You will get no response from me. And it's not because you're a bad person, but I'm not. You're not even in consideration. Yeah, I think that's fair. You're just so, not okay. But okay, so let's, in an effort to answer this, it's it's not okay. So obviously, try to get the next credential if you can. If money or time or any of that's not 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 possible, the next thing I think is just be open-minded and accept feedback when you interview like you know coaching is not like there's other than your credential it's like are you going to be enjoyable to work beside you know and good for my community yeah and then i think you have to i think as a somebody who's applying for a job i think you have to ask what is the need what do you need here um they're like well i need somebody who does these things which may or not be inside my skill set at which point that's a different discussion but um I think you, you need turvy at first. You ever hear that, Leon Curb? He says you topsy turvy the interview. So you, yeah. you interview ask the them. interviewee questions, right? Yes. Like, what do you yes. need? Yes. And all of a sudden, yes. all of a sudden, you're interviewing the box owner. Maybe yeah. you don't and hire them. They uh, and so I think I think you need to figure out if it if it works. And I also um, I think you need to be realistic. I think if you're gonna do that. I don't think it's unreasonable for you to consider taking a pay cut short term. And so you need to figure out if, is that going to work? Am I going to take a short term setback in order to pursue my dream? And I'm not even sure if, if that, that there's a scenario in which that you wouldn't need to do that. I mean, you did it. I did it multiple times. Um, I'm like, if you're going to grow, yeah, you have to sometimes take a step back. You know, I mean, um, 
and 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 not and just get- for the well, let's say like it's not just financial, but it's also in an effort to work on the business. We we coach affiliate owners a lot. Like, hey, I know you think you're the best. You're probably not. Like we interviewed them all, remember? And he kept saying like, but I'm the best at cleaning the bathroom. And it's like, <laughs> but other people can do it. And your right. time is better spent working on the business. In this scenario, it's, are you the best coach at your affiliate? Maybe, you know, at 25 plus hours a week, I'd argue that your part-time coach doing two hours probably has a better class than you just because they're fresh and energized. But you need to you need to sometimes pay that money out so you can do other things that ultimately allow you to grow the business. Yeah, and I think you need to be able to go in there and just work. Just work your ass off. Do the dirty jobs. Do the jobs that nobody else wants to do. Go the extra mile. Do Pay a little bit closer attention to detail. Um, you, you do all of those things that nobody else is going to do. That's how you become valuable to anybody. This is there. There's no job. I'm like, listen. I as as a boss, I will tell you if you are that person, I will find something for you to do. Are you? If you are the person who is just go getter, like always fixing stuff, and I'm like, that's worth a billion dollars from a from a as a teammate. I'm like, I don't have to tell you to do shit. You're just walking around like taking out the trash, you know, like cleaning things up, putting things back, asking people how they're doing. I'm like, you can't teach that. Like you can't teach give a shit. And it's very obvious when somebody gives a shit, when they're just walking around getting stuff done, unprompted. That's who you need to be. And not just when you're interviewing for the job, all the time. You need to be that person all the time who's constantly looking at things through a, a, a lens of scrutiny and said, like, we could do this better. This could be better. This could be better. This could be better. Well, yeah, and I think also just when you're working for a small business, you have to be willing to be a problem solver, be willing to be proactive, be willing to figure things out because, you know, the, the box owner has limited time, you know, limited resources, et cetera. You need to be an integral component there. Like if you just show up, do your job as a good coach, that's great. But what are you doing beyond that? And, you know, and make that very clear that you're willing to do whatever is needed to grow this affiliate beyond just coaching. Yeah. And that requires sacrifice and, you know, I put it in the group yesterday. You have yeah. to be unreasonable. You are very unreasonable. Yeah. That's why I'm better than you. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.